can I say first of all that f foremost in my thoughts are, are the families of uh, Jack Davison and uh, Kevin McGuigan. Uh, I said at the time of their murders that uh, these were appalling murders, disgraceful murders, and that the people who carried out both killings were, in my view, criminals. Uh, I stand by that position. Uh, I don't care uh, what label is put on people. Someone lifts a gun, goes to shoot someone. They are no friends of ourselves in Sinn Féin. They immediately become uh, the enemy and they become dissidents. And violent dissidents, I don't have a problem with dissidents, but I do have a problem with violent dissidents. And the people who murdered uh, both these men were, in my opinion, violent dissidents. Uh, Jerry Kelly has been on the public record over the course of the last couple of years as uh, condemning the activities of this group called Action Against Drugs. That's on the public record. So, so we're effectively dealing with criminals here. I also want to say that I take very strong exception to anybody calling into question my commitment to peace. I have a record second to none of any unionist minister on the executive and standing up to violent elements, whether they be violent dissidents on the Republican side or violent loyalists on the loyalist side. And my record is there for everybody to see, from the killing, the murder of two soldiers at Antrim Barracks, the murder of Constable Stephen Carroll, the murder of Constable Roland Kerr, the murder of prison officer David Black, and many other activities that dissident groups were involved in over the course of the last eight years. And I have stood in this very place, just at the bottom of those steps, with chief constables and the leader of the Democratic uh, Unionist Party in condemning the activities of the people who would try to plunge us back to the past. We've also seen in that period violence emanating from the Loyalist Unionist community. And I have made countless attempts over the course of those situations to get joint statements from the five party leaders in the executive where we could be seen to be standing together against those who were rioting on the streets, injuring by the hundreds police officers attempting to keep the peace. Not on one occasion could I get unionist leaders to stand with me. But my commitment, Carol's commitment, John O'Dowd's commitment, but Michelle O'Neill's commitment, Jennifer's commitment to peace has been called into question. I take exception to that. And I also take exception to those party political interests, North and South, who have attempted over the course of recent times to fuel the crisis for purely party political ends. It is no secret to anybody out there in society that what is happening at the moment between the DUP and the Ulster Unionists is really about the election. It is really about the Ulster Unionists trying to gain an advantage over the DUP and in attempting to play fast and loose with the peace process, bring about a situation where the Democratic Unionist Party effectively walk out and abandon these uh, institutions. And I think that that would, if it happened, represent a massive failure of leadership for that to occur. Because it would leave a vacuum. It would leave a situation against the backdrop of a Conservative-led administration in uh, England uh, of a very real prospect of an increase in violence on our streets. So as one who has stood against violence 
as one who is prepared to continue to stand against violence. My argument is that we all need to be standing together so that those people responsible for these deeds can be brought to justice. When I have condemned the activities of dissident groups in the past, my life has been threatened. A dissident spokespeople from Republican uh, memorials in different parts of the island of Ireland have threatened my life. I haven't bowed the knee to any of them. My home has been attacked on at least three occasions and I haven't bowed the knee to any of them and I don't intend to start now. So we have a very difficult uh, situation. This is a time for leadership. I am prepared to give that leadership. I expect leadership from others, from Mike Nesbitt, from Peter Robinson, from David Ford, from Alison MacDonald, and from David Cameron and from Enda Kenny. So we have a real problem to resolve over the course of the next while. I want to see the Stormont House Agreement implemented and I want to see us continue to move forward because those issues that are in Stormont House and dealing with the past, dealing with the whole issue of flag symbols and uh, identity, uh, dealing with the whole issue of parades and the economic uh, situation that we're all uh, faced into over the course of the next while are vital for the future prosperity of the people that we uh, represent. So effectively, folks, that's where I am coming from. Uh, we will contribute in whatever way we possibly can to find a resolution of the present difficulties, but the resolution of the present difficulties will not be found in people trying to gain uh, naked party political advantage for their own ends. Mr McGuinness, the, the Chief Constable has found that the IRA is still in existence, that IRA members were involved in the killing of uh, Mr McGuigan, even though it wasn't sanctioned by the leadership. That obviously causes problems for the DUP and it causes problems for unionists. Is there anything you can do, or apart from saying that the IRA has gone away, that can assist, Mr. That can assist unionists come back in, into the circle? Well, uh, first thing we need to do is, is talk about these matters. And I'm always up for that. Uh, Mike hasn't approached me for any talks, even though Mike sat in the front row of St Mary's uh, University just a couple of short weeks ago, looked straight across at me in front of a couple of hundred people and said, Martin, I trust you. He's now singing a different tune uh, in the course of the last couple of days. So only Mike can explain that. Right. In, terms of the, in terms of the PSNI, uh, the PS and I have uh, said one thing, and uh, I I'm working on the basis that uh, the IRA have left the stage and present no problem whatsoever, that they're gone and that they're gone forever, and they've handed over responsibility for moving politics forward to the politicians here of all political parties. But the only thing that, uh, that we're agreed about is that the Chief Constable did say that uh, he believed that, uh, in his opinion, his words, uh, that uh, the IRA represent no threat. In our opinion, they've gone away, but they represent no threat. So th there's, there's common ground that mainstream Republicans who support our involvement in these institutions are, are not interested in doing anything that creates problems for us as ministers. You just would believe the, the Chief Constable's assessment rather than yours, Mr. No, Mayor. I think that, let's be uh, brutally honest about this, the leader of the Ulster Unionist Party seized upon this for purely naked political advantage against the DUP. And he played fast and loose with the peace process. And he did run the risk of seeing the Democratic Unionists walk out of these institutions and the peace process being left hanging effectively at the mercy of violent extremists on all sides, outside. That is not leadership. That is. Uh, that is the Ulster Unionist Party putting their own electoral ambitions ahead of peace and I think they should be ashamed of themselves.